Hey guys, welcome back to our SAP Capm tutorial series. In the previous episodes, we built a robust backend with Capm and integrated a SAP Fury application for the front end. Now, in part 5, we will focus on enabling data insertion from our Fury app into the Capm database using our data v4 services. Before we start coding, it's crucial to understand the data flow. When a user inputs information into the Fury app and submits it, the data is sent via an OData v4 service to the Capm backend, where it's processed and stored in the database. This ensures that our application remains consistent and data-driven. Let's begin by designing the user interface where users can input data. Start with starting the local server with CDS watch command. After starting the server, let's go to the output page and open our basic Fiery template. Now, open the view.xml file in your Fiery project and add input fields for each data attribute, title, author, price, stock, location and gender. Ensure each input field has a unique ID for easy reference in the controller. For better understanding, start the page with a breadcrumb. You can see that the breadcrumb is added on the top of the page. Now add the input fields for each data attribute. For a structured output, let's use hbox and vbox tags. Each vbox groups a label with its corresponding input field ensuring a structured and readable output. I have already explained how to use labels and input tags within hbox and vbox in previous Fiery series. If you haven't watched those, I prefer watching those before watching Capm series. Copy and paste the vbox in a way that one row contains three columns. Use the same column name as the IDs of the input tags so that we can do coding easily. We have finished adding the input fields with its labels. Next, below the input fields, we need to include a button control to submit the data. Use the attribute press to mention the function name. The press attribute specifies the event handler function that will be triggered when the button is clicked. In the output screen, we will be having 6 input fields along with a button. Next, we will be focusing on implementing the controller logic to handle data submission from this form to the Capm database. For that, go to the controller folder and open the controller file. Define the function with the function name which we have given in the press attribute of the button tag. Inside the braces, let's write an alert to check the function call. Then go to the output page to check the function call. Now we need to gather the user inputs for each book attribute, ensuring that numerical values like price and stock are appropriately parsed. Use this dot get view dot by id and inside by id give the particular input tag id which you have given in the view dot xml page then dot get value of to fetch associated values from the input tag and store in a variable similarly do the same for all other inputs After fetching all the input values from the front end, check the working by printing any two values using the alert function. I will be using the title and other variable to print in alert function. Populate these input fields with some random values. When we click on the submit button, it is showing nothing. This means that there is some error associated with this function. To check the error, let's go to the inspect element and select the console to see the console errors. The error in the console is showing this dot get view of id is not a function. 
This is because we have used id both in uppercase, i and d in uppercase. We need to change the d part to lowercase. After changing, go to the output window and refresh the page again and type some input and hit on the submit button to see the output. It is showing the input values that means the values has been passed to the function and it is printing via alert. Now delete this alert function and use the create method of the list binding to initiate the creation of a new entity. By invoking the create method, we send the new book data to the backend. The O context object returned represents the newly created entity and can be used for further operations for binding. Then provide the binding elements, that is the variables which have the input value should be given to particular columns on the schema. Manage the promise returned by the create method to provide user feedback. The created method returns a promise that results when the creation is successful and rejects if there is an error. We use this to display appropriate success or error messages to the user and to clear the input fields upon successful creation. We have used message box in the function, so we need to import the message box library to the controller. Also, don't forget to pass the message box to the main controller function. Close the catch by giving a semicolon. Now go to the output screen and give some random input and click on the submit button to see the output. After clicking, it is showing some error. The error is showing O model is not defined. Let's define the O model in the controller. This line fetches the O data v4 model, which facilitate communication between the front end and back end services. Give some new inputs and click on the submit button again to see the output. If you click on the submit button, it is showing products added successfully. That means the data has been inserted to the database. Let's check this by go to the test.http file and sending the request. As you can see, the new data is there in the database now. But if we check the output, then we can see that even after the successful insertion, the given data is there in the input fields. We need to clear this on successful insertion. To fix this, add few lines inside the then statement. Now let's go and check the output. When you hit on the submit button now, you can see all the input fields are cleared now and the new data is inserted successfully. For a confirmation, go and check through our REST API. If you check, you can see the newly inserted data is here in the database. Now you have successfully enabled data insertion from your SAP Fiery application to the CAPM database using OData version 4 services. This integration ensures that users can seamlessly add new records through the front end with the data being accurately stored in the back end. In the next part, of our series, we will explore data retrieval and display techniques to enhance our application's functionality further. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe and leave any questions or feedback in the comments below. See you in the next video.